Hey, let's learn a little lesson about motivated camera movement. Whenever you move your camera in a shot, the camera should move for a certain reason. If there's something in the shot that triggers the camera to move, tracking along with a subject, that's considered to be motivated movement. Whereas if the camera moves on its own, when nothing in the shot is being followed, that's called unmotivated movement. Either way can be just fine, but it's a creative decision that's important to take into account before you shoot. Today, I'm just gonna do a few demonstrations of motivated versus unmotivated movement, and then a little bit of mixing up of the two, and we'll see how they come out. Quick gear breakdown here. We've got the Sony a7S III camera, 35 millimeter Sony FE f1.8 lens on it. I have a Hoya variable ND filter with a UU rig 77 millimeter swing attachment thingy that lets me uh, flip the ND up when I don't need it and flip it back down when I do, so that's really handy. DJI RS2 gimbal, and this is the Sony vloggers handle. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start it off with a shot where the camera's movement is purely motivated. The camera only moves when Kobe moves. The goal of this movement is to be invisible to the audience. It just keeps us focused on the character in the scene. Here's my POV. The gimbal is in all lock mode and I'm just tracking laterally with her as she walks. Then when she sits, I squat down to stay at her eye level. No unnecessary panning or tilting. In this next shot, I'm gonna use a few different tricks to motivate the movement. So let's just watch it through and then I'll do a breakdown. So at the beginning of the shot, Kobe's gonna be sitting here reading this book and the camera will slowly be pulling back. And the camera's pullback will eventually be motivated by Kobe looking over here and seeing this hat that she wants to try on. So in other words, the reason the camera's moving is because it's anticipating Kobe noticing this hat and it's creating room in the frame. It's bringing the hat into the frame so that when she reaches for it, the hat's already there in the shot. So the value of using a motivated movement here is that I can capture Kobe picking up the hat and then walking into the next room all within one shot because by the time she notices the hat, it's already in the frame. So when she picks it up, I don't have to cut to a separate shot of the hat just to show her picking it up. The second motivation for the camera movement here is going to be Kobe walking. So she's gonna get up from her chair, she's gonna walk up toward this door, walk out of the room, and into the next room, and she'll continue walking to that mirror there. The final piece of motivation for this shot is gonna be Kobe looking in the mirror. And again, we're gonna be following her eye line and also her physical movement. So Kobe is going to turn toward the mirror and lean in. And when she leans in, the camera is going to pan over to show her reflection in the mirror. The reason why this movement will feel natural in the shot is because Kobe is giving us a reason to do it by leaning in toward the mirror and by looking at her reflection. If Kobe was just standing back and not really looking in the mirror, that would be an unmotivated movement. In other words, there would be no reason within the frame for the camera to do what it did. That's not necessarily a bad thing. There might be certain narrative reasons why you would want to do that, but usually it looks more natural if the movement is motivated. Now I'm gonna show you some examples of unmotivated camera movement. In other words, these are shots where the movement of the camera is not dictated by what's happening in the shot itself. The camera is moving on its own volition. Unmotivated camera movement is not necessarily a bad thing. They do it all the time in movies and TV shows, and I do it in my own videos a lot. It can add a dynamic energy to otherwise static shots. So you don't need to avoid unmotivated camera movement. Because remember, if nothing's moving in your shot, you're not making a movie, you're shooting a photograph. So something should move. The danger with unmotivated camera movement is that it's much more likely to be distracting to your audience and maybe even a bit annoying because the movement doesn't necessarily have to be happening. So if the audience doesn't feel like the movement has a good reason to be there, they start subconsciously picking up on it and it detracts from their enjoyment of the scene because they're thinking about the camera's movement instead of what's going on in the shot itself. So make sure that when you do unmotivated camera movement, you do it in a way that doesn't detract from the power of the shot itself. You can mix and match motivated and unmotivated movement within a shot for creative effect. 
The lateral movement at the beginning of this shot is unmotivated, but it helps to establish the location for the audience. Then once Kobe starts walking, the movement becomes motivated because we're following her as she walks. But while she's drinking, the camera's push toward her is again unmotivated, purely for dramatic effect. This shot starts off with an unmotivated pullback from a coffee shop, then becomes motivated when my actor steps into frame and continues to track his movement. I designed this shot so that I wouldn't need to pan or tilt, which makes the camera move look cleaner. Here's the camera movement that's not motivated in the typical way. In this shot, the camera notices something that the character left behind. So the movement is motivated purely by the story. So that tilt down and rack focus are technically unmotivated because there's nothing in the shot that's motivating that to happen. But this camera is giving us a bit of dramatic irony here, which is where the audience knows more than the character does. So in this case, we, the audience, are finding out that Kobe left her purse behind and Kobe hasn't realized it yet. In order to rack focus for this shot, I connected this cable to the gimbal. This is a USB cable that allows me to use the PC remote function of my a7S III to let the focus be controlled from the gimbal here with this wheel. So to wrap things up, you basically have four types of camera movement. Motivated movement, unmotivated movement, partially motivated movement, and no movement at all. There's no right or wrong way to do things, but as a general rule, the less motivated your camera movement is, the more noticeable and potentially distracting it will be to your audience. So you have to ask yourself, how much do I want my audience to notice the camera move? Does this movement actually help me tell the story? And from there you can fine tune your camera move so it has exactly the effect that you want. If you want to learn a whole lot more, please click the link in the description for my Film School Unscripted Studio where I have a whole lot of lessons not just about this, but about all aspects of run and gun filmmaking. So thanks so much for watching, please click like, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Did you buy a gimbal, but now it's sitting around collecting dust on the shelf because you're not getting the shots that you want? Well, it's not your fault. Now with gimbals, you're able to achieve shots that used to take an entire Hollywood crew. Gimbals are extremely powerful tools, but you need to know a few secrets in order to get the most out of them. I've been a gimbal user since the first generation of single arm gimbals came out way back in 2014. What I'm gonna teach you are some techniques that you're not gonna find in the user manual and you're not gonna find them on YouTube. This is an encyclopedia of gimbal moves with detailed instructions on how to do each one with visual examples, both in a classroom type setting and out in the real world on a crowded busy street with lots of obstacles that you have to avoid and you can draw from it for your own inspiration every time you go out and shoot. You could improve your gimbal skills in 24 hours. The Gimbal Masterclass is open. Click on the link and join me today.